Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Sophia Phillips, and welcome to Yoka Gala's web seminar series titled Advances in Precision Electrical Power Measurement. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to attend this webinar. I hope you find this webinar helpful and informative. Before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping issues. The audio part of this webinar can be accessed either through the teleconference number provided in the info tab of your WebEx Manager window or through the PC speakers. To hear the audio through your PC, select the Communicate tab and join the audio broadcast. The webinar will last approximately 30 minutes. For any questions you may have for this webinar, please submit them in the Q&A window or chat window located in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Our presenter, Bill Gatheridge, will answer all questions via email after the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and available for replaying in archive form under the technical library of our webpage. Everyone will be receiving an email that will take you directly to the recording 24 to 48 hours after this event. We will also have a poll that will appear towards the end of the presentation. Please take a few minutes to complete the poll when it is available. Our presenter for this webinar is Bill Gatheridge, Product Manager at Yoka Gala. Bill is responsible for the Power Analyzer product line as well as other measuring instruments. He has over 20 years experience with Yoka Gala in the area of precision electrical power measurement. Bill has been running both live and WebEx seminars on various power measurement topics and applications for the past 10 years. Bill has a degree in electrical engineering from Purdue University. Without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Bill. Thank you, Sophia. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our uh, webinar today. What we plan to do, uh, we've had a few introductions. Um, we're going to introduce some new uh, power measuring uh, instruments and some new solutions uh, to help you with your power measurements and uh, your product development, your product testing. We're going to go over some uh, uh, an industry first uh, new harmonic analysis function and cover some application solutions. Then we'll kind of wrap it up uh, with our a conclusion and review of some of our applications. So that's what we've got planned. We're going to have a, a, a jam-packed, uh, you know, 30 minutes or so here. Here's Yokogawa Corporation of America. We're located in Noonan, Georgia. This is our facility uh, where we have all of our uh, product support for the test and measurement instruments, our calibration service, as well as other manufacturing uh, support services for other instruments. Where is Noonan, Georgia? You ask, well, we're just a little bit south and west of Atlanta. Everybody knows where Atlanta, Georgia is at. So we we'll come down to I-85, Interstate 85, about 25 miles uh, south and uh, to Noonan, Georgia. So that's where we're located today, in Noonan, Georgia. Now that you know us, let's have a little bit of fun, and how about you guys introduce yourself. In the chat box to the right, just type in your first name, and city or state or country uh, where you are right now. Uh, so as an example, just go ahead and start uh, putting that in the chat box. Uh, we have, uh, as an example, Sophia uh, is from Noonan, Georgia. Bill, I'm from Noonan, Georgia today. And uh, so just go ahead and uh, just have a little fun, put it in the chat box, and let's see where everybody's from here today. Uh, so we've got a couple things uh, starting to come in. We have Jerry that is located in Detroit, Michigan. Maria is from San Francisco, California. We have Eli that's from Israel. John is from Canada. And Mike's from St. Peter's, Florida, just to name a few. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us. Let's get started with our presentation. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, again, just to have a little fun, now we'll get on with our uh, rest of our webinar. A little bit about Yokogawa and our corporate history. Yokogawa was founded in 1915, and they were the first to produce and sell electric meters in Japan. They opened their uh, our North American operation in 1957. Uh, right now, we have worldwide sales in excess of $4.3 billion. Uh, Yokogawa operates 84 companies worldwide. We have over 19,000 employees operating in 33 countries. You see this parked up in the left? There's a really a neat uh, 1930s vintage standard AC voltmeter. And they made these voltmeters and uh, ammeters and wattmeters and uh, really 
Uh, I remember seeing some of those, the classic wood cases. And the, there was as much uh, work that went in, I think, to these wood cases as we went into the rest of the meter. And uh, today, Yokogawa is the world leader in power measuring instruments. Just to show you a little bit of some of the other things we do, we make the panel and switchboard analog meters. We make the power transducers. A lot of these go into the power utilities. We have multifunction digital meters. Power quality estimates. These are for the people like the plant engineers uh, and other power quality engineers uh, looking for power quality problems. We have what we call our portable instruments. These are the uh, pretty, pretty high accuracy analog meters with the mirrored scale. In our digital oscilloscope line, several of our oscilloscopes include a power analysis function. This is really useful when you're doing board level work, you're probing circuits, uh, looking at uh, components, you can get right down to board level. Uh, and so we even do power analysis uh, in our digital oscilloscopes. Then, of course, we have our precision power analyzer product line. There's uh, six uh, main uh, products and over 20 product combinations that we can offer you for your uh, measurement uh, solution. So, again, we have a large selection of power measuring instruments to, uh, to bring to you for your solution. Today, we're introducing a new power analyzer, the WT-1800 Precision Power Analyzer. The WT-1800 is going to bring you new advancements in some of the electrical power measurements, things to help you with your product design and development, with efficiency measurements, and with product testing. Here's the product. It's a bench mount, laboratory, uh, sit on a laboratory bench. It can be rack mounted, so it's a standard rack whip. Uh, you'll see we have a large uh, LCD display, uh, high resolution. It's an 8.4 inch uh, diagonal, so you can see the measurements that you're working on. Uh, we have the front panel USB uh, memory stick ports, uh, so it makes it easy to save the data, get uh, save uh, screen, uh, screenshots. Uh, also, is used to update firmware as the product goes along. There may be new additions added, and all that's done through the USB ports. This right over here is a uh, optional built-in uh, thermal printer. It's really easy to get a printout of your measure data, of your screenshots. Uh, it's real handy if you're doing engineering work, even easier than uh, saving it off to the USB. So we'll put the, uh, the printer it's available for you. Uh, as a quick, easy printout of your data. Uh, these numbers up here, real easy to display the uh, voltage range and the current range that you're presently set to. On the input side, on the, uh, the back panel, uh, we have from one to six what we call input elements. These are watt meters. Uh, input element, uh, and that's where we bring in uh, the big black terminals. This is the current input. The voltage input is connected through these recessed safety banana plugs. And you'll see that we do use different types of terminals for the voltage and the current. Uh, we don't use the same type of terminal, so it kind of helps you so you don't get the voltage and the current mixed up if they were the same. This little blue BNC connector is to connect things like clamp on current transformers that have a voltage output, so it's a voltage signal for the current input. We have standard communication interfaces of GPIB, Ethernet, and USB uh, interface, and those are all right over here in this area. So all three of them are included as standard with the WT-1800, all the latest communication interfaces. Makes it easy to hook up to your uh, computer, your laptop, uh, or into your automatic test system. Let's take a quick look at some of the specifications. Uh, like I said, we have from one to six input elements. And we have two different types of inputs. We have what we call a five amp input element. It has current ranges from 10 milliamps to five amps. On the 10 milliamp range, we can measure this down to 100 microamps. For very low current measurements, applications like Energy Star, Standby Power, 
uh, those types of things where we measure the very low current. Uh, that external sensor input uh, that we talked about has ranges from 50 millivolts up to 10 volts, so that will match just about uh, anything from current shunts to uh, most of the different types of uh, clamp arm CTs that are available. Voltage ranges range from 1.5 volts up to 1,000 volts. A new addition to the WT-1800 is the high-speed, high-resolution digitizers that we're using. We're now using a 2-mega sample 16-bit uh, digitizer, or A to D converter. We have an A to D converter on each voltage and each current input. So if you had a six-element uh, uh, version, that would be uh, 12 inputs. We'd have 12 A to Ds on that. The bandwidth uh, on this new instrument is from DC and then 0.1 hertz up to 5 megahertz uh, for the voltage and the current at 3 dB point. Power accuracy, uh, it's not the highest accuracy, uh, but it is in our uh, high range uh, product line. So DC, we, we spec 0.1% of reading plus 0.05% of range. So at full scale, that means you've got a 0.15% accuracy. And the 45 to 66 hertz range is the same. And then we just give you a sample as we go up in frequency. In the 66 to 1 kilohertz, we're at 0.1 plus 0.1%, 0.1% of reading plus 0.1% of range. The other input that we have is what we call a 50 amp input. <clears throat> Here, the current ranges go from 1 amp up to 50 amps direct. So we can go up to 50 amps without needing to use a current transformer. This is great when you're doing uh, office equipment, uh, consumer products, home appliances. Uh, you don't have the uh, expense of an external current sensor. Uh, you can keep your accuracy very high without having to add another current transformer. So we can go up to 50 amps for your application. We have the same sensor input. Uh, for uh, shunts and CTs, the voltage range is the same. Uh, we use the same digitizing rate. Uh, however, the bandwidth on the 50 amp uh, element uh, goes up to 200 kilohertz. Then we have the same uh, basic accuracy as we had before on, on the uh, low current input amplifier. So to meet your applications, we've got two different types of input elements that we can specify. And these can be mixed. Um, you can have some uh, 50 amp and you can have some 5 amp. So you can mix those in any combination that you want. Let's look at some applications and uh, solutions now. Here's a motor test system. Motor testing is one of our big markets. Uh, here, uh, as an example, we have an inverter or a, a variable frequency drive. Now, if you're not in motor testing, it could be a similar type of device uh, where you have some type of an input and some type of an inverter or a box or something like that and then an output. But we're just going to show this motor uh, variable frequency drive. And on the drive, it could be a DC or single phase input. We're showing a three phase input here. And then the three-phase output going into the motor, and the motor is connected to a, a mechanical load. So we can look at that input signal to the uh, inverter. We can look at the output signal. We have six elements uh, that we're looking at, so we've got three on input, three on output. In addition, you'll see this over here on motor applications. We can provide a speed and torque input, so we can look at the mechanical power. So the idea here is we can look at the input power to your device and the output power to your device all simultaneously. On a variable frequency drive, typically it's a, some type of a PWM pulse width modulated uh, signal. And these are very complex waveforms. They have a lot of high speed uh, switching. They have a lot of noise on the uh, voltage and then on the current. And this is why we need the high-speed, high-resolution digitizers. And that's where our two mega sample 16-bit digitizers uh, come into play for you. And we offer you a 5 megahertz bandwidth for the voltage and the current to accurately digitize and measure these signals.
Here's a, an example maybe of a, uh, another application, let's say with a power supply. And again, uh, some of the uh, things that go on into these power supplies to make them more efficient. Uh, we have the current waveform down here, and you'll see there's a lot of noise, a lot of digitizing uh, that we need to do to uh, accurately measure those waveforms. The voltage is pretty much a sine wave that is flat topped a little bit. And so we're looking at the, you know, the voltage and this uh, current waveform. And we need to analyze that, look at the total power, and measure it accurately. So even with all that high-speed noise that's on the current waveform, we can take a look at it with our uh, uh, harmonic analysis. You see the voltage is pretty clean. It's a little bit of harmonics just due to the flat topping. There's a lot of uh, harmonic content on the current waveform. And the power waveform, since there's no voltage uh, harmonics, it's uh, pretty much most of the power is in the fundamental here. But anyhow, we need to look at that current harmonic. So if there is noise, we can uh, provide the appropriate filters to uh, filter that out. With our uh, harmonic analysis, we can now look at 500 orders of harmonics. And that's on a fundamental frequency from 0.5 hertz on the low end up to 2500 hertz on the high end. That's your fundamental frequency. And so we can do harmonic analysis to 500 orders now on these waveforms. Before, it was pretty much limited to around 100 orders. So that has greatly extended to meet your requirements and applications. We want to introduce an industry first to you. This is an exclusive feature with the WT-1800. It's what we call the dual harmonic analysis function. Now we can look simultaneously at two different sources. So a typical application might be the input and the output of an inverter, variable frequency drive, or a lighting ballast, or some other similar type device. This will save you a lot of time and help you a lot with your product development used to be when we could only do one, you would have to look at, uh, say, the output harmonics and uh, try to look at the input. Maybe they might be uh, operating at the same characteristics. They might not be. Uh, with this, it solves that problem by, by being able to look at both uh, two sources, like an input and output, simultaneously. Here's an example of a har uh, harmonic analysis showing 500 orders. You can see there's a lot of noise there. Uh, you can almost see the beat frequencies in this particular application, and we can get the whole uh, harmonic spectrum. We can look up here at the digital um, part of it. We can look at the fundamental. We can look at the uh, 100th order. Here's an example of the 500th order. Uh, we're looking at the uh, THD, total harmonic distortion. So it gives you the capability of really analyzing these high-frequency distorted waveforms. Here's an example of our dual harmonic measurement. We have two different sources. Uh, here's voltage uh, one and voltage two. You can see there's a big difference between the two of them and their harmonic content. Uh, so we can do a harmonic analysis on, uh, say, this input side, looking at the total harmonic distortion and the total harmonic distortion on the other side. Simultaneously, looking at two harmonic sources. These can be different frequencies, obviously, different fundamental frequencies. Uh, here's where you set them up over here in the menu uh, with your uh, harmonic source on voltage one. Uh, this is showing from uh, the minimum order of one to the maximum order of 100 in this example. Then we pick the channel two voltage and do the same thing. So it's very easy to set up your dual harmonic capability. Another function that we've added to the WT-1800 is a very comprehensive library of math applications. Uh, these are applications that you guys use in your testing. It's not just about measuring volts and amps and watts. Uh, you have a lot of functions in your industry uh, that require uh, complex uh, math functions that you have to meet. Uh, things like average active power for power that's uh, fluctuating. Uh, a simple power loss formula is in there. 
calculating, this is a good one, the uh, voltage, current, and ripple. So we have a math function to do that, and plus many others. In addition, you can write in your own user-defined math equation to meet your application. So with our library, it's real easy. You just bring this up. Uh, we got uh, uh, you select which one. This is the uh, average active power. Uh, you just select that, click, turn it on, and then click to uh, display that function on the screen. So some of the uh, equations we showed you: average active power. We got uh, uh, you know some power loss, some ripple. And you can input your own formula. These formulas uh, will always come back when you initialize the instrument. So you haven't lost them. And they have up to 20 math fields that we can work with. So you can put in your own equation here, uh, any place that you want, display that, and come back to it. Another function, if you're working in the solar power generation field, is what they call the MPPT, or the Maximum Power Peak Tracking Function. This is a math function that we have, and so you're looking for this maximum peak power uh, with the voltage and the current. So that equation is another solution that we've added for you automatically and that you can display on the screen. So an application for solar power uh, generation. Efficiency, you know, our uh, electronic products is all about efficiency uh, anymore. And so to make these efficiency calculations, uh, it's very important that the input power and the output power are all measured simultaneously and that this data is calculated simultaneously. To help you do that, we have set up uh, a, a formula, and we can do up to four different efficiency calculations. And we use the little n eta for the efficiency. And you just set in the equation very uh, easily from drop-down menus of uh, what power measurement that you want in your calculation. And here's one where we're using the mechanical power. This is off of our motor as an example. So we look at mechanical power, which is the output. And we could look at the, uh, the power, uh, sigma a, which could be the input to the whole system, to the uh, uh, inverter or drive. Okay, this could be a total efficiency measurement uh, from the input to the output. It's real easy for you to set up your efficiency calculations. And then there's a couple user-defined math functions here uh, if you need to do a little more help. This is a new addition. Uh, it's what we call the auxiliary input. Um, many applications are, you guys have come to us, we'd like to bring in some other type of a transducer input. Uh, what I've shown you here is just to bring in uh, some type of a transducer input. It could be from a temperature transmitter. It could be from a light meter or any type of similar device that has a voltage output. We just do the scaling, set up your units that you want to measure, and now you can measure everything, uh, external signals along with your power signals, all simultaneously. And you can display those uh, from auxiliary one and auxiliary two. You put in your own units. Okay, and I've just shown you some examples here. Uh, still measure the uh, harmonic uh, THD. So all this can be done now with the auxiliary input. A new, another new function that has been added, and we get people that have asked us uh, to do this. It's what we call the user-defined event function. If you've ever been uh, trying to test your product and you want to look and see if your measurements are uh, outside uh, some limits, you can now set limits. This is an example here where we set a voltage uh, that if the limit exceeds 150 volts or goes below 90 volts, uh, it will trigger. And that data can be saved into the memory uh, or put out onto uh, a memory stick, printed out, or something like that. So this event trigger, again, is something that uh, you guys have asked us for, and we've been able to add that to the WT-1800 uh, to help you uh, while you're doing your automatic testing. So that way you don't have to go through lots and lots of data to see where your data may have exceeded whatever limits that you had set. 
So again, looking at our uh, front shot of the WT-1800. This, uh, this screen, again, comes from a lot of your input. Um, it's a high-resolution uh, display, and it can be configured in many different ways. Here we're showing four items, and these four items, I'm just showing volts, amps, watts, and power factor. But this can be configured any way that you want it. Uh, I could set this thing up to show four power measurements if you want it. So if you had uh, four single-phase uh, devices hooked up, all you want to do is compare the power. You can set this up to read power one, power two, power three, and power four as an example. Then we can go to eight items. And again, you can configure uh, these items over here in any way that you want. Uh, we're showing uh, here THD. Remember, the harmonics is all uh, uh, displayed simultaneously with our normal power measurements. You'll see over here we have 1 through 12. You can set up 12 different pages of how you want the data displayed. And just recall those at any time. Then we go to 16 items. This is a good way of showing an input versus an output. This could be the input. We're running about 60 hertz. Uh, this could be the output. It looks like this could be on a variable speed motor drive. Uh, running kind of slow at 20 hertz. But again, very easy to set up input and output in any configuration that you want. We can go to a matrix, uh, matrix display. Show up. Uh, here we're showing four of the input elements and the data that we've selected on the left-hand side. Again, so you can see all the data the way you want to see it. Here's an example of a harmonics display. And this was set up for a dual harmonics. Now we're looking at the voltage and the current. We're looking at the uh, DC. This is the total RMS value. Uh, the first part of it goes through 20 orders. Then we have a page function that you can page down to your next 20 orders and so on. This is your RMS values, your THD functions for the overall measurements. So real easy to display the harmonics. If you don't like any of those, you can set up your own custom display. And, uh, so we have this custom display with the colors that you like and measuring the functions that you need for your application. We have just opened the poll. It is located on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Please take a few minutes to complete the poll, and don't forget to submit any questions that you would like to have answered by our presenter, Bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sophia. Just looking at some markets, applications, and a few organizations that we work with and uh, use support. Of course, one of our big markets is motors and variable speed drives. Uh, if you want to have some fun, you ought to look around and see how many motors you have just in your house. It's amazing uh, if you can count all those motors. Uh, we work with um, the HVAC, heating and air conditioning people, and we work with ASHRAE uh, on their uh, uh, performance and how they have to make their measurements. So we're working with ASHRAE, again, to help you in that industry. Inverters and UPS systems do a lot with automotive and automotive-related industries, especially everything in the development of the new electric and hybrid vehicles. Aircraft and uh, aircraft-related industries, and uh, we work with the organization that writes the standards with the DO-160, which has to do with the aircraft uh, power quality system. So we're in touch with those guys as to what their needs may be. A lot of new things are happening in the solar and uh, wind power, alternative energy areas, and you can see where we have uh, addressed a lot of those measurement functions that you need if you're working in that area. Uh, of course, our conventional lighting and the uh, advancements in LED lighting, just uh, you know, power supplies, batteries and chargers, the data centers, um, these big data centers, that uh, all these servers, they're out there in the industry. And we work with uh, one of the organizations that writes their standards for these servers uh, with spec, again, so we can provide the measurement solutions that they need in these data centers. And then, of course, the home appliances, office machines with Energy Star, and uh, we're keeping up with uh, what they need in those industries. So the value that we bring to you with the new WT-1800, uh, first of all, it provides you with high-speed, 
high resolution digitizers. This is required to characterize these complex waveforms that you're dealing with in uh, today's power conversion products. It's a 2 mega sample per second, 16 bit digitizer. We offer you the wide bandwidth, again, to measure these high frequency signals up to 5 megahertz for voltage and current. Uh, power is measured from DC to 1 megahertz. Uh, to make it convenient, we've added the USB storage ports on the front. Makes it easy to save the data or to save the uh, screenshots. The WT1800 can measure currents as low as 100 microamps. Again, for a lot of these uh, Energy Star standby power applications, and as high as 50 amps directly. We offer you three types of computer interfaces as standard. You get the GPIB, which is the IEEE 488 standard, uh, Ethernet, and USB. New harmonics functions. We can now analyze harmonics up to 500 orders. The industry first dual harmonic measurement function permits you to measure harmonic analysis on two separate sources, two separate frequency sources. And then our commitment to you, uh, we're here to uh, stand behind you and to help you in any way that we can. We offer the most complete line of power analyzers to meet your application and budget. Uh, we have product, application, and software support uh, it's provided from a network of our field sales guys that are right in your territory, uh, backed up by our factory regional sales managers, and then our factory uh, support energy engineers here in Noonan, Georgia. Uh, here in Noonan, we have a NIST traceable calibration lab that uh, is available to provide you traceable calibration on your uh, power analyzers. If there's product upgrades that uh, are announced by our factory, uh, we can uh, provide uh, help or the addition of these uh, new options, again, by our factory technicians here in Noonan. If repair service is required, it's uh, again provided by factory train technicians here in Noonan. Uh, the product would never go back to Japan for service, upgrade, or calibration. And all of our Yokogawa power analyzers are covered by a three-year warranty. We provide educational webinars. You know, we all learn from each other. And so to help that, uh, help you learn, uh, you know, some of this, uh, you know, new techniques and how do I do certain things, uh, we have three power analyzer, uh, power measurement webinars. Uh, we have a basic power measurement, and these are the dates that the new ones are scheduled. March 24th, uh, harmonic analysis, uh, will be on April 21st, and then we have a motor analysis, uh, webinar on May 19th. In addition, we have many digital oscilloscope webinars. So you can look and register for these webinars at the uh, website yca.webex.com and then go to Event Center from that home page. And you'll see where to, uh, what's being offered and when and how to sign up. In addition, <clears throat> At the upcoming Motors and Drives Conference um, uh, workshop, we, we are going to be providing a four-hour pre-conference workshop on motor testing. Uh, this will be February 28th in San Antonio, Texas, and you can see more about this by going to their website uh, uh, at edriveonline.com. We have an educational video that uh, has been prepared on the WT-1800, and you can uh, watch this from our website, and our website at tmi.yokogawa.com, and then go to Digital Power Analyzers, and then go to the WT-1800 product page. This is being uh, loaded uh, today, this afternoon, uh, as we talk, because this is the, uh, the, the global announcement of the WT-1800. Or you can watch the video on YouTube. We'll send you the final link on this as a follow-up email to everybody that's online and is registered. So I hope you'll find this video uh, educational and uh, informative and a review of the product and its capabilities and some applications.
Here's just part of the support group uh, here at Noonan uh, that's uh, here to back you up. There's probably 35 or 40 people uh, just in our uh, T&M group that handles the power analyzers and handles our, our scopes. So this is a group that's here to help you out. So again, for your total solution for power measurement, look to Yokogawa. We thank you for attending, and please fill out your uh, poll questions. And if you do have questions, please submit them, and we'll get back to you. And I'm going to let, uh, turn this back over to Sophia. And again, thank you very much. Thank you, Bill, for a wonderful presentation. We have come to the end of our presentation. If you have not yet answered the poll questions, I request you to please do so at this time. Thank you again for attending and participating, and we hope to see you online at future web seminars.